All right, team, we're heading into the nitty gritty of the season here. Round 10, we're four rounds away from the beloved round 13 bye, where we see half of our team that we've created ready for that round be picked for origin. And we also have half the teams on a bye as well, which is uh, always lots of fun. So let's kick it off with these next three weeks because they are obviously really important to build your squad for round 13 and, and likely, I think, selecting... Anyone who brings in you bring into your team right now is not on the fringe of origin because we know that injuries pop up and those fringe guys end up becoming mainstays or first picked in those origin teams there in that one. And it's getting louder and louder. The screams for Angus Crichton. He's knocking down the door for that origin selection along with Nico Hines. So I imagine we lose both of those guys as well. So please, please, please prepare as much as you can over the next three weeks to bring in some players. Anyone you do trade in from now on, I think needs to set you set you up decently. If it's not for round 13, it is for round 14 or, or beyond for that entire buy period. Think of things like the Tigers. They only have one during that whole section. Obviously round 13, that is for them. And then other teams like the Knights in a really good position, just missing round 16. So those types of you know, players from those types of teams can be very, very helpful for your buy planning. And that's obviously going to be a focus of this as well. We will talk a little bit about head-to-head -head at the end of this video as well. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Tigers to kick things off in their next three. So green, guys, is, is a middle of the, the road type of, of draw right now. Red is the tough and blue is the easy one. Easier, let's say that. So Tigers, Knights, Dolphins, and Cowboys, they've got coming up next. Two games at home. I just expect these these type of games to be fairly close, probably you know twenty odd points a piece in in these type of uh, games. There, hopefully a little bit more of a free flowing match for the Tigers and the Knights, considering you know their games last week were pretty stop start. One was more affected by rain than the other, and one was affected by the refing. So yeah, if that's a free flowing affair, that will be good for scoring from those two teams I'm talking about that are becoming a little bit more relevant. Obviously with Galvin, Batemans, Finus. Wonder who ends up getting the half spot. It might be Latu, but I doubt he's an option for those, yeah, for your sides. And then the Knights with the relevant players that they've got in there as well. As we said, round 13 is the only time that they miss a game over that eight game stretch, round 13 through to round 20 as well, which is very, very cool. And uh, they have some, you know, slightly easier matchups in that first section, round 14, 15, 16. So attacking players in their team will, uh, will, will should be able to score fairly well. Across that time period, that is for sure on that one. So yeah, Tigers, just keeping an eye on them. There's obviously a few guys that are relevant for now. And it's very easy to go a little bit earlier on, on some of those guys. If you don't, like they're definitely not going to be around Origin. And if you think you're going to keep them through the next 10 rounds or 11 rounds there. Titans, they come up against the Cowboys, the Knights, and then the Broncos without Reynolds and you know, a couple of odd, odd injuries for them there as well, which they should get a few back outside of Reynolds for that one and be a fairly tough matchup, but these next two will be pretty solid. And I, you know, they could maybe win one of the next two. I wonder if they can uh, beat the, knock off the Cowboys there. So for Titans, you're obviously looking at, you know, Dave Fafita, do you want him for a three game stretch? Not sure if that's worth it now. Last week probably was a good time to buy if, you, if you're in the market for, you know, gun edge, but he's gonna be missing a, a, you know, at least four games there and maybe some games off the bench through Origin. You have AJ Brimson, I think is a really good purchase this week. Obviously, at a similar price to that of Garrick, and he doesn't play 13, but closer to the Origin team than than some may think. If Walsh was to go down, there's every chance that he could be the fullback. So there's that to, to have a think about, obviously, over the next three weeks. A little bit of a risk on that front or an 18th man risk or something like that. But uh, yeah, for, him, for the Titans there, outside of that situation with Brimson or Fafita, and Jolliff, it's probably a tough team to, to kind of go for right now. We should see Mo Fodawaka return this week, but he, uh, his, his price isn't going anywhere over the next few and has a buy in round 13. Could play Origin as well. There's a few things on that front there, but a pretty solid run over the next three. Dolphins, in a similar boat there. Eagles into Tigers into Warriors. Three teams that are leaking some points at the moment. And I you know, I think that's a good thing for, for the Dolphins, obviously, with the Raiders in round 13 as well. A very nice schedule that they've got over the next four especially and then have that buy in round 14 which you, know, you can make some decisions on on uh you know their players from that point for sure so dolphins players 
we probably already grabbed a couple over the last few weeks with Plath and Fuller. I don't think you can pick up Fuller now. There's a chance that you know he loses that spot over the next few. Hopefully, at least plays this one, and we can uh, we can go from there. But Plathy, a little bit of a weird way that they played him last week. Still think that he'll be decent, but he's up another another twenty odd k up to six forty and misses uh, round fourteen there. If you already got a bunch for that that round, it could be a little bit annoying. But if you're holding Salmon or Husey, then he could be helpful. Yeah, they're, they're obviously helpful for the midsection, which you, know, you may not need Plath in that one there. So you got um, your Cody Nicarima, a few people asked about, Isaiah Katoa good, doing good things, Herbie returning. There's a few good things happening for the Dolphins with um, Aiken. People asked about Aiken this week. I just don't see you know, a world where you're buying him. You're easily holding him. But um, I wonder when Connolly gets back on that edge for sure. Might not happen. They might just play him through the middle for a bit. But yeah, that's the Dolphins. A really good setup. Obviously, playing 13, playing 16, playing 19, but missing 14 and 18 in that time. Storm, they have a lot of injuries, so that's something to note with them. You've got Sharkies, Eels, and Eagles over the next three, so fairly solid before their buy. And that's Knights, Warriors, Dolphins, Raiders after that. So a really nice stretch just with that buy in the middle of it. And we're on fullback watch, so who gets the spot? Is Falonga okay? Is... You know, Nick Manny potentially a buy at fullback. I think, you know, if you're looking at his scoring from last year, he ha- he will get a, a bit of an uptick. And it's more just like how how well can they go and attack with all these injuries that they've got? That's probably the question for the Storm. And, uh, you know, can Munster hold on to his really good form over the last little while? So that's the Storm. They missed 13-19. Just a little heads up for, for those guys. Sharkies, you got the Storm, the Roosters, and the Panthers. So a very, very tough run. I don't think it affects Hines in too great a detail. Probably he isn't hitting an 80-odd or a 120 odd, but I think anywhere near that 65 to 75 across those games. The way that the Sharks are playing, I think, is fine. In previous years, they've come up against some of the tougher teams and, you know, really shit the bed. And from here, I do think that they're playing better and coming up against the Storm with some injuries, which is going to be helpful. Away from home, yes, makes it a bit tough, but they're in good enough form and confident enough at the moment. I think he'll still be able to be fine as the dominant half, potentially some more kicking and the like there. And then Roosters, Panthers. So I wouldn't be looking to target really any Sharks players. Like Atkinson, I think, could have a little bit of a tough time of it over, over the next little bit in terms of you know missed tackles, for sure, uh, especially with Manu coming up in round 11. <laughs> Not sure about Hughes in this stage, but at least, you know, Eli Katoa. Out on that uh, out on that right edge, and then Panthers, you've got you know Martin and, and Cleary and Tungo and all the guys you're gonna worry about there. So Atkinson is a fine purchase, but he's not gonna destroy it for you in, in any shape or form, in my opinion. So yeah, that's the Sharkies. They obviously play 13, 14, 15 before buying 16 and 20. So keep an eye on them if you own some Sharks players like Iro. If you don't own Iro, get him in your side. I think he'll still score fairly well in the up- upcoming fixtures because he's just been doing it in base. For the Panthers, they also play all the way up until round 16, but their next three are Dogs, Warriors, and Sharks. So I think the Dogs will be a fairly tough one for them this week. They're playing really good footy. Warriors away, they're always away from home. It can be tough, along with Sharks away as well. So yeah, if if you're looking at Panthers, it's hard to really kind of pick any of the outside backs at the moment. They're all scoring pretty average, like Taruva's getting good ball and scoring tries, but um, yeah, Taylor May had to get a runaway try to get some good points. So I wouldn't be purchasing any of their guys. They've got a couple to play Origin as well. In terms of, you know, do you buy Cleary this week? You can, but just be aware that, you know, he's going to be out in 13. Does he back up in 14 with this issue that he's carrying? Not sure. And like he could miss a bunch of tackles against Kikau and, you know, Sherry and, and those and, and Burton, those type of guys this weekend as well, which could hinder his score you know, from going nuts, obviously, as well. So that's the Panthers. Interesting situation for them. Bunnies. Uh, Edwards is kind of the only guy that you want to be looking at, but he's on the fringe of Origin too and super expensive. For the Bunnies, really the only one I'm looking at this, well, people are looking at Cody Walker and he could definitely be a purchase. He scored pretty well the last two weeks against two of the tougher teams, obviously having Panthers last week. And they come up against Dragons, Cowboys, Eels, where he could definitely do well. It's a big, big gamble to, to buy Cody Walker. Someone who won't be as much of a gamble, it's likely to be Talis Duncan in that 13 role. They could play Havili or anything like that, but Talis seems to be the guy and he should be able to score well. Very, very cheap at that front, but he's someone that you could easily purchase in round 11. Like he has a mid-30s break even. 
to have a look at uh, him for sure. Jai Gray, you're going to have to sell. And uh, they lose Isaiah Tass as well. It just, it's non-stop for the bunnies right now. So, yeah, I think that's all we need to say on their front. For the Dogs, they come up against the Panthers, which is going to be a tougher one. And then Raiders and Dragons should be a little bit easier for them. But I still think they're going to have a decent shot against the Panthers. Away from home will make it tough for sure. But uh, they're in good form at the moment. And I'm a little bit worried about Karaz and his knee. Hopefully he's fine. Um, and it's just base stats. We, he got the really good base stats against Storm and picked up a 50-odd. Hopefully that's the case in this one. And he has to do a fair bit of work out of trouble. But in a game where you're carrying a bit of a knee soreness problem, maybe the base stats don't come. So I'm a little bit worried on Karaz this week. But following that one, if he can get through it unscathed, then it's Raiders, Dragons, Knights, and Eels and a really nice run for the Doggies up until their bye in round 15. So I think all the Doggies you can try and hold on to. In terms of purchases, there's not really any. Maybe if Preston plays actually plays some games off the off the edge, we can get him a lot cheaper. And he could be around 13 purchase. That would be nice. Josh Curran's a hold, very clearly. Um, yeah, just wish that Preston got on for like five or 10 minutes and, and got his break even really high and started losing money, but that didn't even happen, which was frustrating. Anyway, Eels, they've got Broncos into Storm, so I've got them in red and then in the, the Rabbitohs with the with the light blues. So yeah, tough couple of stretches here. I doubt we have many. Anyone holding Talangia is going to be hoping that he scores well. There's that. I've got Lusik still in my team and a uh, good chance I hold on to him this week and hopefully he can score fairly well if I can loop him or something like that. I'm not sure when that game is played. I haven't checked yet, but... Um, yeah, he's probably the only one to kind of... Him and, and Dylan Brown obviously wants to hold on to. I think Dylan Brown, a terrific purchase in round 12 or 13. If you are looking that way, if you need a half for that section, I think round 12 is a good little time to purchase. Mitch Moses obviously won as well. If he can come back in sort of maybe that round 11 or 12 clash, then round 13, he could be a purchase as well. If his foot's okay. Raiders, they've got the buy this week. I think hold on steady to... Basically, basically all your Raiders. And then they've got Dogs, Roosters, Dolphins. Not the best stretch, but you know, we've shown that they can do decent things. So I'm holding Strange. I think Seb Chris is a hold. And uh, you know, Chevy, you can wait again and see what happens in round 11. If he gets a spot back, we'll have to find out. And then Weeks is going to be the clear buy in that, um, in that Dogs clash, in my opinion. But does come up against that tough left-hand side of the Doggies. Great to, great to say that we, you know, weekly there's a... You come up against the dogs and it's just which side you're on as to how tough it's going to be for you. Next up, we go to the Dragons. They've got the Bunnies this week, which is a bit sad that we the week we want to go up against the, the Bunnies, it's the Dragons. And really, unless you have Lomax, it's um, not a real exciting fixture, unfortunately. But yeah, into the bye and then into dogs and Panthers in round 13 when they miss a few, which is helpful, I suppose. But um, yeah, the Lomax is an interesting one. If he was on the wing, I think, if he went back to the wing this week, I think it would be a great purchase. But to be in centers and then have, you know, doggies on that down at left-hand side, Panthers the week after, that's not super nice. Obviously, the buy next week. If he's on the wing, I think it'd be worth it. But at the moment, a little bit worried about it. Anywho, it's pretty, that's probably it on the drag. It's not a super exciting team. They have the buy in round 16. They have the buy in, you know, next week in round 11. Probably a few too many games you're missing over the next bunch just to have a good score this week and, and potentially you know, around 13, 14 player. It's solid without being incredible and they missed round 20 as well. So it's three in the next, what, 11 games for the Dragons. Knights, they've got the Tigers and the Titans the next two. So I've got that on the slightly easier side into a bye. Both away games for sure, but uh, they, they've been really gritty and doing good things out there at the moment. So yeah, good stuff for the Knights. If you've got any of those players at the moment, especially in the attacking side of things, hopefully, as I said, it's a free-flowing game in that one. And Armstrong and, and these guys can do good things before they buy in 12, and then they play 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, which is great. Broncos, after that Roosters clash, they now thankfully have a little bit of an easier stretch with the Eels and the Eagles away into Titans at home. So expect Reese Walsh to do good things. Hopefully, Piakura a trial or two over the next few weeks, which will be helpful for him. Carrigan, I think just stick solid with him. He'll probably play the 60-odd minutes unless there's injuries, as there was last week. So he's fine to hold. Payne House don't buy as yet. But um, yeah, that's the Broncos for now. A lot of them origin players, obviously, so it's hard to sort of jump on any of them. Willison, I think you can hold as well. Eagles, they got a tougher one. They got the Dolphins away into Broncos home, Storm home. So I don't think they're a very clear 
team to buy into their buy in round 13 into Panthers away. I think Garrick's a good buy, but I'm not convinced that it's going to be great. Like he might get a good score again this week. You know, wondering who they who Dolphins put into that left edge center spot up against Garrick. But then it's Broncos without Reynolds, sure, but you know they could destroy them into Storm, which hopefully like. Yeah, Hughes is good to go by that point, and they've um, worked out who their fullback is, whether it's Falongo, whether it's uh, Meany. We'll work that out, and then yeah, buy into Panthers away. Not sure how well Garrick's going to go. Like, is he going to get average thirty-eight or something through that time? That would be fine, but he doesn't make a lot of money. Like, if he goes forty-seven this week against Dolphins, and then hits sort of a thirty-eight average the next three with the buy in between, he's not going to get too much further than six twenty, six thirty k, which is still fine. But if you've got other options, obviously you know. Garrick, there's Brimson, there's Drinkwater, there's Edwards, there's a lot of a lot of guys you can select in that in that uh, yeah, wing fullback slot. He's not a slam dunk if you want to go elsewhere, which is probably how I'm going to play it. Now that I didn't get him last week, upsettingly, then um, he's up that extra bit of cash, and I think that he might be a better buy in either either in that round 14 or round 15 clash to get him for 16 um, and 19 and 20 as well, which is really cool. So that's kind of where I'm looking at with with Garrick to cover up center and wing fullback through that time. Hopefully not too expensive. We'll see how it goes though. Warriors, they've got the Roosters, the Panthers, and the Dolphins. So it doesn't get any easier for the Wars. They might lose these next three as well. Into that buy in round 13, Cowboys away, Storm at home, Titans away, and then Broncos at home as well. So it's a very tough stretch for the Wars. Anyone you've got in that side, you hold steady to them. I think RTS might be the one that you look to potentially move on, but still he could be a hold as well. Up to you on that one. Pretty tough run coming up, as I said. He comes up against Manu this week, Roger. So that'll be fun for him, that's for sure. Expect some missed tackles. Roosters, they've got the Warriors, the Sharks away, and then the Raiders away as well, with the Warriors being at home this week. Anyone you've got in that team, I think you're holding on to. Terrell May, clear hold for me. After that uh, good score on the weekend, he could come out and do really well. He could not. Uh, but yeah, look to potentially use him as a looper or in and out, something like that, depending on how other players go in your squad. But uh, I do expect him to score fairly well. It's just how many minutes did he get? So if he gets 30 minutes, he could still get a 30-odd. If this is a closer game, then expect it. Warriors do like to play up through the middle and you'll get plenty of work. Um, Watson... Hard to pick unless he's clearly the 13 and Bradley's on the edge. That's probably the only way you could select Watson at like 670 odd K now. It's wild. Uh, so that's the that's the Roosters. Like Manu's a really solid one for sure. Very expensive though, obviously. But continues to score well. Um, yeah, that's probably it for them. Walker, you could buy if you want. I'm probably going to leave him personally. I've got a lot of 14 players, but you might not. And that could be a good buy for you. And then Cowboys, they have probably the best run over the next three weeks. They've got Titans away, which they like to have a good back and forth with. Usually Rabbitohs away, but um, you know, decimated side. And then the Tigers at home. Before Roosters, as I said in that round 13, if you listen to the my round results video yesterday, if you went back and checked that out, thank you so much. Firstly, but uh, I think Cowboys have a really nice run for their attacking players. And Drinkwater is going to be the head of that snake there for sure. And then... Yeah, Val, I think, is if you've got him, you're, you're clearly holding on. I've got both. Yeah, I've got Val in, in Supercoach. I'm excited to see that. And Drinky, I'm looking at purchasing this week. So, yeah, super excited to, to look into that one. Probably going to lock it in. We'll see how the week goes for sure. But definitely, he's someone I think you can target for the next six games before potentially moving on in round 16, given he's got the buy into Panthers away at Blue Bet and then a buy in round 19 as well, and then one later on in the year in round 25. So it could be a little bit of a shorter term play, six week play six week play for Drinky before we move him on to a better um, player for that, that four week stretch or that 10 game stretch or whatever that's going to be from 12 game stretch from round 20, uh, round 16 from the, the Cowboys. So there you go. That's the thoughts around the overall side of things. They're the players you should be looking at. From a head-to-head standpoint, I think you do need to look at some teams that have had a buy already. That's a, a pretty clear indication because with your head-to-head squads, it, it, you're probably looking to to purchase some guns that they're either going to be an origin, and that's fine. If you're going to pick origin guys, as we always say, they need to, in my opinion, have two buyers in round 13, 16, and 19, right? 
if there are Titans, a Tigers player with, with the play's origin, still okay. Yes, they play. Yeah, they missed that one right at the back end of the season, which may be your grand final, but your grand final might be in round 25. Obviously, at the moment, it's still so far away, but if you're looking at certain players that have two buyers between sort of round 13 and and round 19, think of these teams at the end, like the Cowboys, like I said. Cowboys are probably a team I'd want to avoid. Very likely, that's semi or your grand final, round 25. So if you're looking to conserve some trades, as you're bringing in guns this week, Try to pick teams that have had a buy, as I said, in that first nine rounds. So think everyone here from Tigers, Titans, Dolphins, Storm, Sharks, Panthers, Rabbitohs, and Dogs, they've all had one already. And then if you know, you're looking at guns from the Panthers, they play, yeah, they missed 16, 19 only. Origin guys will miss 13, but you know, if they're non-origin guys, then that's going to be great because you'll have your players available for as many games as possible. That's the goal, right? If you're looking at guys like Bateman, that's where he works really well. He plays a lot of games over the next, you know, three months, which is awesome. You look at underpriced assets a little bit. So maybe instead of drink water at a little over 700K, you should score well for you over the next month. But maybe you do go for the cheaper asset in Garrick or you're the cheaper asset in Brimson if you need a wing fullback, right? You might go for Falongo if he ends up with the spot just because you're like, well, he has upside he could potentially do really well and make us some money as well. You may look for Talis Duncan this week if he gets that start and you think he's going to get 60 minutes and sort of a 45 to 50 odd or something like that. Look to a little bit more of those mid to lower range guys that you think can make some good cash. And then in your secondary trade for the week or your third trade for the week, you're going for that top tier gun, whether they are a guy that plays origin or if they're just a top player in their side, like an AFB or something like that. That could be... A really good way to look at it. Obviously, you know, Hopgood's got through that buy. If, if he gets lucky and doesn't make, oh, not, not for him, gets lucky for your fantasy team and doesn't make origin, then he could be a good one to slot into your side as well. All those types of decisions you want to you wanna look at for sure in your head-to-head team and then focus again on where you're at in your head-to-head league. Are you near the top, in the top three or four and, and could, you know, could have a loss here or there through the buy period? Then sweet, you know, you don't have to trade too heavy through that period. If you're in a position where you need to get some wins, then then maybe you do go for that drink water play or you do go for that gun that's on the fringe of origin. You know, that kind of stuff there that that just trying to get, you know, play for points a little bit more. And then you can work out where you're at through the buy period and make some trades accordingly. And yeah, if you're if you're if your league plays 13, 16, 19, you may need to have a few more trades left over for that period than if you weren't playing. Yeah, the buy rounds in your head to head. So go into settings and check that out, guys. It should say buy rounds. If it says buy rounds off, that means you're not playing a head to head matchup in 13, 16, 19. If buy rounds are on, you do have a head to head matchup in 13, 16, 19. And they're the only time buy rounds is just those three weeks only. It doesn't include 14, 15, 17, 18. They're going to be normal fixtures in your head to head comp. So I want to leave it at that, guys. Thank you so much for being here for the impact of the next three rounds video and the little head to head update there that's where i'm at that's what i'm thinking and i hope that helps you guys in your quest for overall glory and head-to-head glory with your mates heading into round 10 of nrl fantasy